Hello my dear young and energetic physiognomy a very warm welcome to Diksha Vedantu YouTube channel I am your master teacher Neha ma'am in today's session we are going to discuss about the basic mathematics so let me check first the live has started and can you see me and hear me if you are watching the video let me know you can uh, let me know it in the chat okay so the live has started and uh, is the voice proper Yes, the voice is proper and also you can see the presentation clearly, right? So then let's start today's session without any delay and let me give you some introduction before starting the session, okay? Hi, hi, hi. So yeah, hi Abhilash, hello. Yeah, so the this session foundation series we are running for the 10th pass out students right and also 9th and 10th moving students also can watch this video so that they, that will be helpful for them and particularly speaking about 10 pass out students that is you are done with your 10th and you are moving towards your 11th and 12th exam uh, 12th that is your pu uh, pu intermediate level right so then uh, the things are not same as what you have studied in 10th I have already done a video regarding understanding your 11th and 12th physics, which is as similar as 10th, but not the concepts. Okay, getting what I'm telling. So I mean that is, yeah, this concept may be same, but the depth, the calculation, the derivation, the numericals are not as same as that of 10th. So I'm not scaring you by telling that it's difficult, you can't do. I'm not telling that. But same kind of approach does not help you in the forward, okay? When you move forward, the same kind of approach which you had in your 10 boards uh, will not work here, right? So here the approaches should be very rigorous. You should work hard a lot, okay? If I show you some formulas that exist in your mathematics which will be used in your physics, you'll be like, ma'am, is this really we want to study this? You'll be like that. But in the course of two years, you'll understand everything, you'll learn everything. So that's not a big deal, but lots of hard work, dedication and interest towards your studies is required if you are serious towards your studies. Okay. So today I'm going to discuss the basic mathematics that is required for your physics. Because some of you may be dreaming to become a doctor, you were, uh, you'll you be choosing the NEET, so P, uh, PCB, right? So you may be choosing PCB and you're out of the touch of mathematics. And you may think that I'm, I got rid of mathematics. It's not my, uh, it's not my cup of tea and it's, I'm free from it. But it's not completely true. For our physics, for our calculation, we require mathematics. So don't think that I have chosen PCB, so max, I don't want to study anything. No, it's not true. If you are really aiming to crack the NEET exam, physics is as well as important as any other subject because majority of the students, those who opt for the NEET exam, they lack in mathematics and that will impact their physics marks. So in you know that in such a competitive world, losing some marks may take you away from the ranks which are required right so keep that seriousness in your mind so yeah max is required you cannot say complete bye bye to max because it e exists in all other subjects clear with this understood the importance of max that is required for other subjects so don't think that you're free from max so to, uh, speaking about uh, let's start this video, I actually, I have planned in two parts, okay? Part one, I'll be discussing about some of the concepts and part two, I'll be discussing about other concepts. And if you uh, if you want to find any book, if you are interested, I'll be showing a book also, which I have referred. Actually, I have chosen PCMB. So, I had both mathematics and bio. So, uh, for those who will be having mathematics, it's a plus point for them because most of the concepts you'll be, which are required for physics is completed in your 11th and 12th mathematics. Okay. So, that's not a big deal. Right. And yeah. Any information regarding this, if you want, you can just put it in the chat. I'll be uh, taking your questions and I'll be responding for that. 
Okay. Shall we enter to the session then? Yeah. Shall we enter? As I said, we open to maths. Don't think that it doesn't exist. So you, you can see these formulas that exist in the physics, right? In 9th and 10th also, we have used mathematics to solve our physics numericals. Let the formula be E is equal to mc square, V is equal to d by t or A is equal to V by t. Right, all the equations has some equal sign, square, square root, divided by, so they are nothing but the max, right? So this is how max is incorporated in physics. Clear? So lots of formulas, lots of things are required. Don't think that just in a one go, you should understand everything. That is not possible. With the time, with the flow of time, you'll get to know all the things and you'll practice the practice makes the perfection right so don't worry about thing, seeing the multiple formulas thinking that how can i study this in one day it's not the game of one day it requires time and that's completely okay it's not wrong right okay then let's enter so let me tell you what are the concepts that i'm going to teach here for you okay actually uh, this is not only for the 10 students I have tried to make the sessions in a large group. So 11th and 12th, it will be helpful for them also. Okay. So yeah, talking about the concepts, the mathematical tools, which I'm going to discuss here. He is about, first we'll start with algebra. Okay. You know the basic formulas of A plus B whole square is equals to A square plus B square plus 2AB. So there the algebra starts. Okay. Algebra. Then the binomial theorem. So binomial theorem, why we require? If I ask you what is the root of 102, what is your answer? Or if I ask you to divide some unusual numbers, so you'll find difficulty. Mom, how? If you ask me a root of 100, you'll be telling easily, mom, it's 10. But if I ask 101, what will be the root? You'll be like, how to do this? Right? So, solve these kind of questions. We will be using binomial theorem. So, it has a simple good formula. We have to draw it with the steps. And if you choose mathematics in your first year and 12th, 11th and 12th, you will be getting this derivation also. The binomial theorem derivation is important. If you choose 10, you will get to know that. If you choose max, you will get to know that. Okay, after that, we'll be discussing about slopes and graphs. As you have already seen in your 9th standard physics in the mag, uh, motion chapter, we were discussing about the distance time graph, velocity time graph, straight line, area under the curve, right? So, these kind of quantities are going to be used massively in your 11th and 12th physics. So, what you have studied in 9th and 10th are like just a trailer of a movie. So, the entire movie you are going to experience in 11th and 12th. It's like that. Okay. What you have studied is just a front page of the cover. Entire book is left. Okay. Have that in your mind that lots of things are there. And you should not get scared by those things. You should be open and ready to take it. Clear? Then, trigonometry. Important. Lots of concepts. Let's... Like uh, trigonometric ratio, inverse trigonometry, trigonometric formulas, compound angle, and much more. Okay, trigonometry is a very a wide range of concepts it has. It. And what I recommend you for this mathematical physics, if you're not choosing uh, your maths as a subject, so actually, this is my uh, graduation formula list which I have made. I have made these kind of lists for my 11th and 12th also for mathematics and all. You can use beautiful colors. You can write them. You can make these kind of formula lists for the important concepts so that whenever you want to revise, you can just take out a paper and you can go through the things, right? So, uh, you can use that. I hope it was visible, right? It's, an, it's just an A4 sheet paper and I have written the formulas over that. You can use that, okay? That method will be good instead of writing, a pla but practicing is required. And let me tell you the thing also. Hi, 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 hello. Hi. So, and let me tell you another, another thing that is only making a formula sheet is not enough. Because to remember, I'll, I'll, with the session flow, oh uh, yeah, with moving forward with the session, I'll be giving you the lots of formulas, right? So, only writing it on a page is not enough. 
you have to practice it and practicing it is should be very rigorous okay without practice it's impossible right you cannot remember that many things so practice is required just write but practice is extremely important clear then we'll be discussing about how are you i'm great how are you how the studies are going on yes so logarithm log e power x and log log x differentiation in differentiation integration also we'll be using this logarithm functions log m plus n is equal to log m into log n uh, n and log m by n is equal to log m minus log n these kind of formulas that exist in the logarithm table we'll be studying about that also okay after logarithm we'll enter to the differentiation d by dx right d by dx d by dt we have seen this right if i consider dx by dt this is the differentiation if i consider this as distance so what the result gives me yeah can anybody tell me in the chat what this result gives me enter second year can i listen the class yes of course you can refer this class and this is not only for the as i said in the beginning it's not only for the 10 past students you may be in 11th you may be in 12th this session will be helpful for you right so it's the basic mathematics that that is required for your physics in the entire journey of your preparation right can anybody tell me the the, the resultant of the differentiation dx by dt where this x is distance very easy question very simple can anyone tell me the answer or else if you want me to give other questions so what is dv by dt very simple very basic so just to show that differentiation is used in uh, physics i have used this examples yeah anybody what's the answer to these questions yeah keep answering i'll move forward so then we have integration so as of now you have not used integration but in upcoming sessions we'll be using that so one of the example that we use integration in physics is work done so in nine standard physics you have been uh, studied about work done is equals to fs or fs cos theta only this much you have been studying right so forward moving forward we'll study that fs is nothing but integral of force and displacement if force is constant okay if force is constant we'll just take it outward and we'll take the different integration of x that is yes displacement from point x1 to x2 so see here the difference shall i tell the answer so see here if we differentiate distance if distance is changing with time what it is called we have already studied this in the ninth standard right distance distance by time d by dx by dt is nothing but distance by time no 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 how come x is equal to dx by dt it's not possible we are differentiating the quantity x so what's the meaning of differentiation we are cutting the value a big value the value is changing x is changing x nothing but distance is changing with respect to time when distance changes with respect to time what quantity do we get just think about the answer it's just a quantity if i write here da by dx what it means is this a is changing okay the above the quantity present in numerator is changing with respect to this getting the point what i am explaining here understanding what is actually differentiation if you opt for mathematics clearly they'll explain you all the things with small small formulas in much detail if you're not choosing mathematics in your boards for your first and second year you'll require this okay so let me answer to your question that is distance by time is nothing but just velocity or you can consider if you don't want to tell velocity you can tell it as speed right because displacement gives velocity distance give, gives speed and differentiation uh, differentiating velocity with the time we get acceleration 
because acceleration is rate of change of velocity that simple is this is that clear right okay so i said you how do we use integration also not only in the work done in many places we will be using integration which is an important concept okay so i'll be discussing about these all concepts in two parts of the video let's in this part uh, part one video let's concentrate on algebra binomial theorem slope and graph okay and trigonometry let's focus on four concepts then we'll move to the logarithm differentiation and integration and let me be frank here i under i i can clearly understand integration i was not able to understand integration during my intermediate that much when i went to bachelor's of science bsc degree there i got to know about what actually is integration because here we'll be just running to score learn get the marks get the ranks and all what happens in the graduation there your speed will be little reduced okay then you'll get the time to understand what actually is going on and in those courses there will be in very depth detail starting from the beginning so here we'll see some lack which is starting from the beginning right so most of the students feel integration as difficult so let me tell you that because you're going to enter uh, integration you will be getting in your 12th standard fine so most of the students feel integration difficult but it's not actually difficult i understood this during my bsc degree but not in 12th i thought of skipping integration for my 12th boards also i was feeling so much scared of this chapter okay i was like i don't know anything from integration but it is not that okay so i'll make sure that to explain you in very basic detail so that you don't feel that integration is difficult right shall we move forward now right shall we move forward okay let's move forward and let's start our session so basic basic is nothing but a simple thing i want to explain here about the basic of uh, physics that is required okay so let me just scroll this now so basic what i'm telling uh, uh, speaking here about is proportionality proportionality concept let me just write it down okay so where we have seen in the, this in the 10th standard can anybody tell me where we have studied about proportionality so i was telling you guys about this so where we were speaking this we were speaking about proportionality concept in the ohm's law right do you guys remember this ohm's law electricity chapter so there we have studied that a uh, potential difference across the ends of the conductor is directly proportional to the flow of current right is it clear so i'm connecting i'm showing this properties this max with your basic physics that is your 9th and 10th physics i'm trying to express the mathematics in this format uh, yes of what about triangles what are you asking Mm, triangle uh, i hope you're speaking about the trigonometry adjacent opposite right sine theta you're speaking about, about this so we'll discuss about this during trigonometry right after the session not after the session after this concept right okay so ohm's law we have studied that potential difference across the ends of the conductor is directly proportional to current i said you at that time also when we remove this proportional symbol we introduce a proportionality constant right and what was the proportionality constant here can anybody tell me quickly in the chat what is the proportionality constant that we use in ohm's law right quickly anybody
Yeah, I'm waiting for the response. The proportionality constant used in Ohm's law is dash. What's that? Yeah, tell the answer. I'll be waiting for the answers, those who will join. And also, uh, we have seen if. Yeah, shall I state the answer? So, if there is some quantity x which is directly proportional to y, what it means actually? Right? If there is some quantity x which is proportional to y, that means that if I increase this quantity x, this quantity y will also increase. If I decrease x, y will also decrease. That means that both are interdependent on each other. Okay, they are interdependent on each other. If I increase, the other one will increase. If I decrease one, the other one will also decrease. So, whenever proportionality you will see, you can understand that both the quantities are interdependent on each other and very similarly. This is for directly proportional. So, what I am speaking about is, this is that said to be directly proportional. Yeah, what happened? No problem. Students will be watching the videos after the live also, right? So, it's not mandatory. If students are right in the live, then good. If not, afterwards they will watch. Okay? Ma'am, do you remember me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's focus here, guys. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. Okay. So, I was speaking about the proportionality symbols, right? So, nobody sent me this answer. You are chatting and uh, writing the things in the chat, but nobody is answering this. Why? You don't know. What's the answer? Tell me. I'm waiting for this. Okay. So, that was about directly proportional. Okay. If some quantity, uh, let me consider A. A is inversely proportional with B. So, how do we re represent inversely proportional? Just by writing its reciprocal, 1 by B. A is directly proportional to one, reciprocal of B. That means that this A and B are inversely proportional to each other. And can uh, anybody tell me where we have used this direct propo directly proportional, inversely proportional concept? The both answers are same. Here, here, the same thing comes. So, can anybody tell the answer? So, this is inversely proportional. Okay. Inversely proportional. So, let... Okay, I'll only... I'll tell the answer. So, the proportionality constant that exists here is nothing but the R. R means resistance, right? So, we are speaking about resistance. Okay, and in the concept of resistance, we have seen that resistance is directly proportional to length and resistance is inversely proportional to area. There also I have explained you guys that if length, is, if length increases, resistance increases. If area increases, resistance decreases. This is nothing but the proportionality. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, ma'am. You teach really awesome. Thank you for that. Ranjan. Okay. So, this is how the quantity changes. Right? It's about directly proportional and inversely proportional. Okay. So, I was telling about if any quantity, if I'm writing x is directly proportional to y, if I want to convert it, this into equation, let me write it here. If x is directly proportional to y and if I want to convert this into an equation, I will introduce a proportionality constant. Let's call it as k. So, it will be y is equals to x is equals to ky. 
So that spring constant formulas you'll be studying about y is equals to kx. These kind of formulas will come in your uh, 11th standard when we are discussing about when we'll be discussing about spring concept. Okay. So just remember that whenever there is direct, this means directly proportional. This is inversely proportional. Inversely proportional means if one quantity increases, other will decrease. Directly proportional means both will vary similarly. Okay, and when we remove this proportional symbol, we will introduce proportionality constant and equal. So, if it is A inversely proportional to B, we will write A is equals to K by B, where again K is a constant. Right? Is it clear? So, this is about the proportional thing which we want to know before entering to the physics world. Right? So, we will be using this apparently more time. Shall I move forward to the next concept? So one thing is done here. Let's move to the next concept now. Okay, so we are in algebra, right? So you can see the list of formulas on your screen. Don't worry that should I practice these many formulas? These are nothing but running around the same concept. So let me tell you that. Okay, so you already know this a plus b whole square is equals to, yeah, thank you. Okay, a plus b whole square is equals to a square plus b square plus 2ab, a minus b whole square is equals to a square minus b square. Yeah, yes, thank you. Okay, so see here, plus plus, if it is minus here, so minus 2ab. And a square minus b square is nothing but a plus b into a minus b. This formula is also known. So, here you can see a extended version, right? So, a square. See, just observe this formula. It's so easy. So, this formula, you not uh, need not buy at this. So, they, what is done in this formula? Can anybody tell me? How can we remember this formula? Do anyone know this? See here, let me show it. So, A plus B whole square is equals to A square plus B square minus 2AB. This formula you already know. This is plus, okay, plus 2AB. This formula you already know. Now, I will just shift, okay, I will just shift. See here, A plus B whole square, whole square. I'll keep it here. This my plus 2ab, right? I'll shift it to the right hand side. So it becomes minus and minus 2ab is equals to a square plus b square. This is the same formula here. No, 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 it's not hard. So see, you if you see it directly in a thing, you'll feel that hard. But now see, is the formula same? This one and this one? Is it not same? So, I have just derived it from the first formula, right? Just transfer this plus 2ab, this side it will become minus 2ab and this is that formula, okay? They have just written a plus b square here and this thing here, just interchange them, that's all, okay? It's not the difficult one and here also the same concept is going on. This is the conversion of second formula. Okay, they are not the new formula. They are just derivation of these old formulas. Clear? So then this is cubic equation. You have to remember this. And you can see that a square minus ab. Okay, got it. Good. So this is cubic equation. A plus a cube plus b cube. A, a cube minus b cube. You can just uh, remember this with some hints like only during a, if it is plus here, here it is minus. Here minus, here plus. Okay. Got it? Great. Okay. So these kind of similar formulas you have to derive with the flow of time. With the time you will understand all these equations. Right? So these kind of formulas, these are the basic three formulas. Majoritively, you should know the first three formulas and then this two, a cube and b cube formula, right? So these five formulas are important. Okay, shall we move forward? 
so on all other apps just using them again and again and let's decode this formula also let's decode this so what's going on with this formula let's understand that too so i can see that they are just adding equation first the first formula minus second formula right so this i'm decoding this uh, a plus b whole square minus a minus b whole square is equal to 4ab i'm decoding it okay so i'm just i'll multiply i'll divide sorry i'll subtract 2 from 1 formula 1 so let's write that a plus b whole square minus a minus b whole square okay this is in the lhs so what's going on in the rhs a square plus b square plus 2ab okay minus of a square plus b square minus 2ab you can see right what i'm writing then what happens here there is a square plus b square plus 2ab plus into minus minus a square minus b square minus into minus plus 2ab this a square minus a square b square minus b square cancels 2ab plus 2ab gives us 4ab so this is nothing but just deriving the equation <coughs> sorry these are not the new formulas just we are using five formulas which i said they are important we are just interchanging them we are mixing them subtracting adding and forming new formulas it's all about that okay so this is about your algebraic important formulas that are required hello hello hi so my name is neha i'm a physics master teacher at diksha vedantu okay for the first time you have joined so welcome to the class yeah okay so next i'm speaking about quadratic equation so what's what is quadratic equation how will be the quadratic equation form right so let me first write it so quadratic equation will be in the format of ax square bx plus c is equals to zero okay this is called as quadratic equation and the examination will ask us to find the roots of this equation they'll give you a quadratic equation and they'll ask you to find the roots right normally you already know a method which is uh, used to find the roots right like let me give an, you an example here let's consider an example yeah yeah let's consider an example x square okay uh, let's take minus here x square minus or oh, let's consider 5x plus 6 is equals to 0 so normally in the 10 standard you'll be studying about factorization method right you already you guys are aware about the factorization method let me just solve it so x square so if i multiply i should get 6 if i add them i should get uh, 5 so i can understand to get the multiplication of 6 i should go with 3 and 2 okay yeah only two roots are known but moving forward you'll get to know uh, as of now in the 10th standard you only know about the real roots right moving forward you'll also understand what are imaginary roots okay imaginary roots will also be included okay ma'am almost two zeros yeah the equations what we get see x square so i got to know that 6 is multiple of so it's 3 and 2 if i add them i should get a negative sign right so i can use here minus 3x minus 2x plus 6 is equals to 0 okay see here so if i use minus and minus minus into minus plus 
So it satisfies here. It satisfies here also because minus minus they'll get add and minus sign will be kept. Okay. From this I can take out x as common. X minus three is remaining. Let's consider minus two common. X is remaining. As I have taken out minus, so I'll introduce here minus minus into minus plus two is taken out. So here it is three is equals to zero. I think you already know this method, right? Factorization method. X minus two into x minus three is equals to zero. I can write x minus two is equals to zero and x minus three is equals to zero. So what's the value of x? X is equals to two and x is equals to three. So this is the final answer. So we found the roots, the values of x, where the equation turns out to be zero. Right. So x is equals to three and x is equals to two. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, welcome to the channel. Sage. Okay. Welcome to the channel. Fine. Okay. So this method is called as, as I said, you already know this as factorization method. Factorization method. Okay. Done. Okay. Now, what is beyond this? In our quadratic equation, till 10th, you know about this. Do you guys already studied this formula also, which we use to find out the roots? Yeah, yeah. Alpha, beta are also used. I'm going to tell about it right now. Okay. Roots of quadratic equations. I'm going to tell about alpha and beta also. Yeah. Okay. Roots of quadratic equation. If there is any equation like, oh, let's consider with a small letters. Okay, let's consider the equation ax square bx plus c is equals to zero, a quadratic equation. Now, the formula to calculate the roots, if it is easy, you can go with this method. If you are unable to find the roots with this method, if it is difficult, then you'll go with the formula alpha is equals to, right, uh, mine, uh, not alpha, I'll just state it x. So, after that, I can go to here. Let's consider x because the root x is equals to minus b, right, plus or minus b square minus 4ac by 2a. Yeah, yes, 2a. So this is the formula to calculate, find out the root. If you don't know what is the root, if you are unable to find the root by factorization method, you will use this formula to find out the root. Am I clear? Okay. So now here you can see plus and minus two things exist. So you'll get two roots that is alpha and beta. So these are the roots of the equation. Which method is easy to find the roots? If you are able to, if the question is easy, if you can take the multiple, if you can take the sum, if it is easy, you can go with this method. If you are unable to do, because every question you cannot solve with factorization method, it will be difficult. So, at that time, you should go with this method. Okay? Okay. Clear. So, now we got the roots alpha and beta. Now, there are properties of these roots also. Before that, yeah, sum and product. Yes, that is about the properties of roots, right? So, what is the, let me write it also. Okay, 
some product here. So see, now alpha and beta are the roots. We know that. If I add these roots, okay, if I add beta and alpha, I'll get the value which is equivalent to minus b by uh, minus b by e. Okay, and if I multiply alpha and beta, okay, if I multiply alpha and beta, I'll get the answer c by e. Right? So, this is the properties of roots. So, what is b? The coefficient of x. What is a? Coefficient of x square. And what is c? The constant value. Right? By using these properties, you will be studying lots of things in your view. So, I cannot explain entire mathematics here because it's a very bulk. Right? So, important things I am highlighting here covering wide range of topics. Okay? Done. So, what shall we do now? Shall we solve some of the problems or shall we move forward? Uh, yeah, there's other thing. C by A. Exactly. Minus B by A and C by A. Exactly, guys. That's right. Okay. Uh, I want to tell you here other another point that thing is. So, this root. Okay. B square minus 4ac, it is called as discriminant, okay? This root of, yeah, actually you can consider root of b, b square minus 4ac as a discriminant. If this discriminant is equal to 0, you can, instead of calculating all, if you get this value to be 0, so that means that the roots that exist, right? Uh, so, they are 0, okay, let me state it. So, class, so how much is the time now? Okay. So, still some time we'll be having. Yeah, yeah. I'm speaking about the discriminant. Okay. So, if the discriminant thing is zero, that means roots are same. What this means? Roots are same. X and alpha and beta. Roots are same. Okay. Remember this point also. Okay, if discriminant is zero, roots are same. Real and equal. Exactly, exactly. Real and equal. That is also true. That is also true. Real and equal. Correct. Do you want to get the break? I thought of finishing in one go. Again, break. If you want, I can give a break. But the session will go lengthier. Do you guys want break? Sessions will go a little lengthier. If that's okay, we can have a break. Uh, uh, this is not 11 physics first chapter. 11 physics first chapter, I have already took uh, the live, which is in the channel. You can find it physical world chapter. Okay, it's already in the channel. This is of basic mathematics. Fine? Okay. So. Okay, let's solve a question. Let me give a question here. So, is there space anywhere? Fine. Let's have a question here. Don't want break. I thought of starting a bit early. Uh, but that was... That wasn't... Okay, no, pro no problem. So, let me give you a question to practice. You can use this as homework. Okay? Or if you want me to solve here, I can solve it. First class is of basic maths. Yes, before telling you about basic mathematics, I have introduced you guys to the physics. So, you can go and check out that video also. Equal to 0, equal say greater and 0 say chota. Okay. So, you are telling it exists between 0 and 1. Or yeah, somewhat like that. So, still there are many concepts actually. So, still binomial theorem. Okay. It takes half an hour, I guess. It takes half an hour. So, we'll see that. So, let's dive to binomial theorem. 
okay let's dive into the binomial theorem so what is binomial theorem as i said you in the introduction when we have to calculate the complex roots okay if they ask you square root of some complex things uh, limits okay we i can teach limits during integration of different uh, and differentiation the part two of this video okay in today's video i'm keeping the basic things as algebra binomial theorem graphs we'll be studying about basic basic things right if you want me to teach limits i cannot have add that in the next session fine now let's start with binomial theorem the formula to cal of this binomial theorem is so it is one plus x power n okay 1 plus x power n is equals to 1 plus n into x this is the formula is that clear yeah yeah binomial ka example we i'll give here okay don't worry about that so this is the formula of binom binomial theorem so let's calculate let's find out add in next session okay fine i'll add it in the next session so if they ask you to find the square root of 102 how to solve it we'll know that before that there is a condition here the condition is the x okay this x should be less than 1 so only at that time we can use binomial theorem so let's use binomial for square root of 102 so see here, let's split this square root of 102 in the format of 100 plus or yeah, 100 plus 2. Okay, 102 I have split it into 100 plus 2. Fine. So instead of square root, what is n? n is nothing but the power. You can see it, right? I have given it in the power place. It may be 1, minus 1, 1 by 2, anything. It's the power number. It's a number. So, or, okay. So, next. So, I want to convert this formula in this format. So, I want 1 in the first position. So, what I will do, I will divide 100. If I divide 100, the first term will be 1 and the second term will be 2 by 100. 2 by 100. Whole power is, again, 1 by 2. Okay. Can we use the formula n c zero? Yeah, 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 yeah. That is if n is greater, I think. So n c naught a power phi b power phi mi n minus. So I remembered this uh, when you said, okay. It's I think it's if n is greater than one, it will be like n c naught a power a power n and b plus n c 1 a power n minus 1 b square and so on n c n here it is 0 i think here it is 0 here it is 1 here a will be 0 by b will be 1 yeah this is if n is greater than 0 after equal where here i'm solving it okay great so now I uh, converted it into 1 by 1 plus 2 by 100. Repeat the question. Find the square root of 100, uh, 1 or 2. That's all. Repeated in question. Okay. Repeated in question. Then that's good. Okay. Uh, now what shall I do? So I have uh, instead of dividing with 100 so simply we cannot do that i am taking out 100 constant uh, common okay we cannot simply divide 100 we have to apply some problem multiply and divide so 100 will exist okay then what uh, what shall we do now uh, so it's 1 so let's apply the formula this is 1 plus y uh, x power n so i should introduce n so 1 plus is there so n n is 1 by 2 okay 1 by 2 into x 1 by 2 into x is 2 by 100 so 2 2 will get cancelled 1 by 100 is remaining and 1 power uh, 1 power power goes can you repeat this question 
you want me to repeat all the steps i cannot understand okay fine see here they have asked in the question they have asked us to find out the root of 102 okay now i will be using binomial theorem formula to solve this question so how i will use it i want it in the format of 1 plus x but 102 is not in the format of 1 plus x right so i will split this 102 into 100 plus 2 okay square root is nothing but the power is 1 by 2 okay square root means power 1 by 2 so just that i have written here i have split 102 into 100 plus 2 and i have took the root in the format of 1 by 2 clear with this moving to the next step i took 100 common outside the bracket if i take 100 common from here one will be remaining here there is not 100 but i am taking 100 common so what happens it will get divided under 2 so this will reach to this equation after that what i am doing i am using this formula because now it is in this formula you can see this 1 plus x in the place of x i have 2 by 100 in the place of n i have 1 by 2 so this is in the formula format so i i'm just applying the formula 1 plus n n is 1 by 2 into x x is 2 by 100 clear with this yeah abhina what are you telling ma'am how can uh, how to contact you i want to your channel of physics class 12 g level what are uh, what you are speaking about you want me to teach or do you want to come on the channel and you want to teach hi huh, it's not i don't know about that yes understood now so i cannot understand oh who was that ranjan did you understood now the steps okay let's move forward so i have took 100 common so i'll just keep 100 here so what is remaining inside the bracket 1 plus 1 by 100 so what is the value of 1 plus 1 by 100 so 100 into 1 okay this is 10 power minus 2 if it goes uh, 10 power plus 2 if it goes to numerator it will become 10 power minus 2 10 power minus 2 is nothing but 0 0.01 right Okay, okay okay so if you want to teach you can apply from the portal if you get selected with antu portal if you get selected then you can teach okay so if i multiply this what will be the answer okay so okay there's other thing here so this has 10 1 by 2 here I took your name, but I thought it's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I got to know. Rajan, but I took N first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So see here. This 1 by 2 root we have to apply. We cannot take root out. So it is 10 into 1.01. That turns out to be 1 point. Okay. You can just multiply this. You can check it in the portal, which is required. Okay, 10.1 will be the answer. Fine. Let's move forward. Let's not waste much time as I have to cover uh, things more. I'm not here to tell you guys that how to become teacher in Vedantu, right? I'm not teaching that. I'm teaching the mathematics. So let's concentrate here. Okay. So, you can see some of the formulas given on your screen. Okay, great. So, y is equals to mx plus b. These are nothing but the intercept and different kinds of formulas that are used in the equations of slopes. Okay, if there is a graph, there is a slope, you want to calculate the slope. So, these are all the different formulas. And I'm not diving deep here because you will understand this in clear when this uh, this will be taught in uh, clarity good okay 
so yeah so you can see different formulas x is equals to a means x is constant when x is constant the line will be parallel to x axis like right so you can understand it like this okay and uh, if you want to solve uh, i have other question for this binomial theorem we can solve that too because it is also a good question that will give you idea i'm all formula are important uh in this with the time flow you will understand but i cannot say all are important yeah very basic formulas are, are on your screen so they are important so let's solve other another one question which is from binomial theorem if they ask you to divide 2 by 0.99 share the pdf in the telegram channel so go and join the telegram channel you'll get the link in the description if you have already joined you can get there okay if they ask what is this answer 2 divided by 0.99 if we look at this question it looks so complex right so by using uh, binomial theorem formula we can solve it so what shall we do first first let us let us reduce the denominator dream job is to teach 11th and 12th physics so are you done with your graduation so this is 2 divided by 0.99 nothing but 1 minus okay it will be 0.01 1 minus 0.01 great so let's follow some of the steps and convert our equation into the given formula so i'll keep 2 as it is i will take this to the numerator so then it will be 1 minus 0.01 whole power minus 1 okay oh that's good okay so 2 into so now it is in the formula of 1 plus of this is you can consider 0.01 nothing but it is in the formula form of 1 plus x power n right let's apply the formula here let's keep two outside one constant one minus power is minus 1 okay minus 1 into 0.01 so it will be equal to 2 into 1 minus into minus plus 0.01 okay then let's move to the next step that is 1.01 okay that will be equal to 2.02 so this is the answer fine no i didn't had my dinner yet if anyone want to study from any other channel i'm not stopping anyone it's your wish right so don't disturb the students present here that's all i request from you okay i hope you'll understand that right i'm not stopping anyone to refer any other things so it's your wish you can move there right so 0 2.02.02 is the right answer here and still i didn't had my dinner but i want to complete this first okay let's move next okay i just did that okay so see here a uh, parabola you will study about this also parabolas exist when you will get the equations let me just write it here when you will get the equations uh, such as x is directly proportional uh, x and y square kind of x is equals to y square these kind of formulas represent the parabola right so you can study about that i'm not diving deep into this also because directly i cannot explain these things right so
I'm fine. This is too tough. Yeah, hyperbola, parabola. It's a little complicated. Okay, so in trigonometry, the trigonometric ratios are important. So the first thing you want to do is put this table in front of you. Take a Xerox copy, right? Uh, stick it on the wall and practice this. Trigonometric ratios, extremely important. We'll be using this sine theta. So you, if you study about the uh, like the structures in physics, we'll be speaking about a block which is sliding over a horizontal thing. So we'll study about gravity is acting downward. The object is moving in forward direction. So we'll be using these kind of ratios in physics, right? So study this table. It is important. Trigonometric ratios are important. Fine. Okay, let's, so you can just remember this sine one and other are just reciprocal of that. Yeah, in Newton laws of motion, NLM. Yes, yes, yes. There we'll be using this kind of structures. Okay, you can remember this one sine and you can just derive them all. Just remember sine 0, 0, sine 30, that is 1 by 2, sine 45, 1 by 2, 2. And you can just see the reciprocal. So one is present here one three by root two three by root two okay it's not that difficult also once you if you write like this if you study this just in the reciprocal order you have to write here zero from zero goes to 90 and that is nothing but our cos values and tan is nothing but sine by cos zero by one zero one by two divided by three by two is one by root three right so you can just remember one formula that is of sines sine and you can derive rest of the things so tan theta is equals to sine theta by cos theta right i hope you already know this right yeah cot theta is nothing but cos theta by sine theta cos theta by sine theta or cosecant theta or what you can see here cos cosecant theta is 1 by sine theta. By using this formulas, you can derive it. And secant theta is equals to 1 by cos theta. Right? Using this formulas. No, I'm almost done with the session. It's not too lengthy also right now. I'm almost done. So, here a point you must know how to convert from degree to radians okay so zero degree it's zero but if i consider 30 degree or let's consider 90 degree how to convert it into radians you should know that okay so the formula that is used here is let me give you the formula so that it will be easy so pi means 180 degree okay if i want to convert a degree into radian i just want to multiply it so let me show you that one degree is equals to pi by 180 radian because pi is 180 180 by 180 so it's radian it's not degree radian okay so one degree is equals to pi by 180 radian if i want to calculate 90 degree that will be equal to pi by 180 into 90. Ma'am, 11th is related to 10th or 9th. 11th is related to 9th, not in 10th. 10th is related to 12th. Okay, into 90. 0, 0 cancel, 9, 1s are, 9, 2s are. So, what is the uh, value in radian? It is pi by Clear? So, we have converted degree into radian. If I want to convert a radian into degree, let's see how to do it. If I want to convert a radian into degree, so the formula is, as I said, pi radian is equals to 180 degree. So, let's consider again pi by 2 radian. Pi by 2 radian will be equal to pi means 180 by 2 
sorry pi into okay let me just say this properly okay one radian is equals to pi by 180 okay now it's proper one degree is equals to pi by 180 one radian is equals to 180 by pi you just want to multiply this 180 by pi if you want to convert it so if i cancel this again i'll get the answer 90 right 90 degree so if you want to convert from radian to degree multiply with 180 by pi if you want to convert it into degree to radian pi by 180 10 okay it's for everyone okay if you are 10th also these sessions are helpful for you next moving forward this is a bulk formula that is present in trigonometry that is called as compound angle formulas and multiple angle formulas etc 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 but make the formula least with the course of time you'll understand all the formula ma'am when your class tomorrow uh, tomorrow, maybe by afternoon and evening, I'll be taking uh, four at that time, maybe evening. Okay. So, these formulas are important. In our school, when I joined 11th in our college, the our say, sir made us to make a formula book, very short book, in which all these formulas were existing. I had that formula book, but where I don't know where I kept. I was searching that to show you guys, but I didn't found it. So, you can also do the same. Make a formula book, small book, keep it with all, always with yourself so that whenever you are free, you can just go through the formulas. Okay, so that will be helpful to remember these complex formulas. Okay, so this is inverse trigonometry. So you will understand what is inverse trigonometry. After studying trigonometry, we will study about inverse trigonometry. So there is domain, there is range. You will understand all these things. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, this was about the session. Is the session clear to everyone? So done with the session. Today's concept. Is it clear to everyone? So I'm done. I'm done with the session. And yeah, as I said, in tomorrow's session, let's discuss about limits, integration, differentiation, and logarithms. Is that clear? Okay, 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 good. So yes, guys, this was about today's video. Before ending the session, let me tell you that I have already done the your 11 standard physics first chapter, that is physical world. If you have, if you have not watched that videos yet. You can just refer to that. And I have really amazing videos in the video section of this channel. Like informal definition of physics. My perspective. Okay. What I am sharing about physics. Uh, why I am saying everyone. Because after the video. After the live. Those who will watch. They will also feel that I am speaking with them. Right. So I will be telling us everyone. So, who was watching in the beginning, who is watching now, who is who will watch after the video, it's for everybody. Done? Okay. So, yeah, this row and gray, amazing content. So, do watch those videos also. I teach, uh, you said me, you teach really well. So, thank you so much for that. That means a lot. So, yeah, this was about today's session. Thank you so much for watching the video. Let's meet again in the next session and bye-bye. Yes.